and one of our nurses who went in for um, Wednesday. Wednesday was the day after the quake. Um, so all those pictures are firsthand. She saw them. She brought them back and showed them to us and the older kids who um, could handle it. And all of them, we, I was struck by the fact that all of them had lost somebody. You couldn't meet a Haitian who hadn't lost somebody in the quake. Either a, you know, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a, a friend. Port-au-Prince was such a central part of the nation that everybody knew somebody who died. Um, and last night I was praying about it, and I feel like I want to hurt like they did. Um, they lost brothers and sisters, but so did we. Um, <laughs> and I would just like for you guys to um, hurt for those people, because those are our people. But um, that's not really why. That's not what we're supposed to be talking about. I was supposed to be talking about the quake. But anyway, um, so the quake. The day of the earthquake, we had done the mama clinic, which is why we had gone to Haiti. Um, it was just, you know, it was the normal day. We were weighing kids. We were helping these kids grow up. Um, get healthy and it was a lot, it was really cool, it was a lot of fun. Um, we helped them file and stuff. And that night, Katie and Megan had gone to do laundry for the, um, for Canaan. It's quite the process because <laughs> they don't have a washing machine and so they're doing it by hand. So they're doing it right up until dinner. And the rest of Canaan, we were all sitting down to dinner and we heard the biggest truck ever. And we just heard this rumbling. And we kind of all looked to the path and we realized that it wasn't it wasn't a truck, it was coming from deeper. It was um, the, the earth was shaking. And we kind of realized it was an earthquake when all of the kids started jumping up and just they had been sitting down at dinner, so they just were flinging their you know rice and beans and I mean they were they're just running out screaming, and it was just mass chaos. And I'm looking at the guy across from me, and we literally sat there for like, I don't know, 10 seconds, I feel like, and just looked in each other's eyes and we're like, this isn't real, this can't be real. Um, but we, we got up and we were falling them out. And as I got to the door, I kind of looked back and this, I mean, it's crazy, all the kids are screaming and crying and um, freaking out and I look out and the cafeteria is just carpeted in rice and beans and uh, right in the middle are the two little babies, uh, Navasa and Alicia. You probably saw tons of pictures of them if you're walking in because we like to take pictures of the cute babies. but. Um, and I looked back, and they're sitting in their high chair, just kind of looking at me, still crying and rice and beans in their mouth, like, where's everybody going? <laughs> Eat? You know, there's food here still. Um, so, you know, we ran in and got them and took them out of the cafeteria. With, I mean, it was just, it was a little bit of um, comic relief and this crazy pandemonium. But um, all the kids were um, crying and wanted to know what that was and what had just happened. You know, the younger kids didn't understand it at all. We were trying to explain to them scientifically what was going on, and they were still freaked out by the fact that the house was shaking, you know, and they didn't care. Um, and that night, they heard on the radio that um, they weren't supposed to sleep inside because the government was still worried about houses falling. So all of them decided that was a chance for a slumber party and got all of their mattresses and blankets and hauled them outside and stayed up ridiculously late, you know, crying and being worried, but really they just wanted to hang out with each other. But um, the next day, we had decided that if we were going to let, um, if we were, weren't going to run out of food, we were going to have to start rationing it. So we went to two meals a day, which wasn't really as bad as I thought it would be because we were all doing it together. And um, we did get hungry for sure, especially right before dinner. It had been all day we hadn't eaten, but it was, it was really worth it because it kind of brought us together, I think. And it was really interesting because the day after the quake, all of the adults pretty much left the kids in charge of us, um, in our charge, because they went to port, um, that's where the pictures came from, to go and help. There were some nurses who work at the clinic, and so they went to port to help. And so the next day, a bunch of the teachers weren't there, a bunch of the adults who help out with the kids weren't there, um, the cooks, some of them had left. So the next day, you know, 75, 80, 90 Haitian kids are left in charge with kind of us, and it was real bad. But um, <laughs> it, it was fun because we got, we became preschool teachers, we became, you know, we fed them, we bathed them, we improvised when we realized we were out of diapers. I don't know if you guys saw the picture of Alicia and her diaper went all the way up to her armpits because we ran out of diapers when we were running out of food. 
and we were improvising and looking for, and we finally looked and we were we found some depends. I don't know how those got there at an orphanage, but they had them. So we used them and it was really strange, but she thought it was hilarious. In all of that, uh, it was kind of, we're kind of just taking it day to day. We hadn't really realized what was going on. We were, we had seen the pictures, but we hadn't heard the death toll until a little bit later, and we realized how big it was. Katie and Megan had put something on their Facebooks the night of the quake, just, we, and we were talking about it, we were wondering what it was on the Richter scale, maybe three, four, I don't know. We felt it, but none of our buildings clocked. I wonder what it was. We'll find out in the news tomorrow when they actually decide to look at Haiti. And we, Katie put something on her um, Facebook about, well, I just went, I just had my first earthquake ever. That was, that was interesting. And immediately, was your parents? Are you alive? Are you okay? I'm so glad. You know, and we're like, alive? Are you kidding me? It was, I mean, it was an earthquake, yeah, but what kind of, what kind of earthquake was this? And we found out the internet was ridiculously slow, the phones weren't working, but the power was out, but that's not a really big deal in Haiti because the power's out a lot, and the phones are sketchy anyway. And so we, um, the internet was finally starting, we were able to find out it was a 7.0, we were able to find out all the stuff about the earthquake, we were able to get kind of a death, um, it was really rough in the beginning, but kind of a death toll, which was really sobering in all of this. And, um, in, in all of this massive destruction and dealing with all of this, the day before we left on Friday, and Megan will tell you how we left, it's interesting. Um, the day before we left, though, there was a baby named Safi who came, came to the clinic, which he was, not, um, he was not affected by the earthquake, but he was sick. He, his mom was only pregnant for seven months, so he was premature, and he was only three weeks old, and he was sick. He was really sick. And when they came, when his parents came in, he was covered in um, voodoo healing, which was like banana leaves. It was, it was nothing that could help him. And he was, there was pictures on that. He was tiny. He was um, discolored. He just, he didn't, he didn't look right. And um, in all of this chaos and all of this destruction and all of this pain, we had this baby who was dying. And we were able to help him. We, I mean, the nurse prayed and prayed and she thought this baby was dead. And she was able to bring him back to consciousness and get an IV into him, which was a miracle. And um, we were able to take him to the hospital, even though we didn't have enough gas, really. And we, you know, but in all of this pain, it was just really cool to see a little brother come back to life, kind of, almost. Like, um, just in all of this death, I was able to see life. And that was something that really struck me, that in all of these things that I feel like I can't do, I'll be thankful for what I have. You know, like I, I wasn't able to save those hundreds of thousands of people who's, who died, but I could help this one baby. I could hold this bag for his IV, and, and he was able to live. So in all of that, it was really cool to um, see God at work, even when everyone was so upset about what had happened. And um, that was just, that was really powerful to me.